Hey YouTube, how's it going? I promised I would be talking about zombies this week. So, both episodes, both Monday and Thursday, I'm going to be talking about zombies because it's just such a, you know, wide topic that I figure I can squeeze two episodes out of it. Today, I think I'm just going to talk mostly about zombies in general and I'm going to tell you about my zombie survival plan. For those of you woefully unaware, a zombie is a person who has died um, and their corpse is brought back to life. So it's kind of, they're reanimated. They're reanimated corpses. Spooky, you may say, but a reanimated corpse. I could get to see Grandpa again. That doesn't sound so bad. You're wrong. You see, what makes a zombie different from a regular human or even a corpse that is brought back to life, such as someone who had a heart attack and they're dead for a few seconds and then they bring them back to life. There's a big difference between that and a zombie. A zombie, to survive, to, to keep moving about, has requires sustenance, like any other living creature. Zombies require food to keep going, and their food of choice is brains, specifically human brains. I believe the most common myth surrounding zombies is that there's an outbreak of one person usually, and or a couple people, and they walk around, you know, looking for brains, and they bite someone. Once a zombie's bitten you, you have anywhere, some, I'm, mostly my knowledge comes from movies, so I have read the zombie survival guide, but mostly you can, it can be anywhere from a couple seconds to days, weeks, before the virus that the zombies have when they bite you gets enough into your bloodstream, multiplies enough that you die, and then you're brought back as a zombie. So after a zombie bites one or two or three people, that's when things start to get ugly, because then you've got four or five zombies, and they wander around, each of them bite three or four people, each of them bite three or four people. You can see how it can spiral out of control. And sadly, stopping a zombie is not the easiest task either. The most effective way to kill a zombie is to destroy its brain. If you just lob off their arm, they're not going to feel it. They have no feelings. That's kind of one thing that differentiates zombies from humans is they, they don't think. They just act. All they know is that they want brains. They don't feel pain, cold. They feel hungry, yeah. No pain, cold, heat, anything like that. All they know is that they need to find another human to infect, to bite, to devour. So mostly the most... Um, well-known way of killing a zombie is a bullet to the brain or anything else that can get inside their brain and churn it up a little so even if you were to cut off their head in some cases the mouth can still gnash and if you were to step on it or get close to it it might find a way to still bite you and therefore infect you so why don't we just kill the zombie the first one that shows up usually it's not that easy as movies have taught me See, even when they're wandering around with their eyes blank and one word on their lips, brains, coming out in a moan, they're still very human-like. They still look like Great Aunt Edna or the little boy down the street. They still look human, and that makes it very difficult for some people to kill them and to destroy their brains. It really does take a hardened person to be able to deal with the blood the carnage that you're going to see during a zombie invasion. Now I guess I should let you in on my my little um, idea. I don't have much because as a college student I move a fair amount at least twice a year and living in different locations of course affects me differently um, and my plan differently. When I'm at college my plan involves going to a building one of because um, the you know buildings have multiple layers going to one of the ones that is a bit taller, you know, not just three stories, maybe four, um, and you have to close off the stairwells. So you've got to find a way to either destroy the stairs or block them off so nothing can get up. A problem with this, of course, is if there is, say, a fire, you're trapped up there. Also, if there's another human who has not been turned yet and they try to get up top, you won't have a very easy way of getting them up there. However, if you can get up to a, a higher floor, third or fourth floor, um, what your first step to do is, is before the water gets shut off, the power goes out, you need to fill everything available with water. Water's one thing that'll run out pretty quickly, especially if you've got a small group of yourselves. Of course, a no-brainer is you'd also want to hide food, not hide, but bring up food, 
and you'll need weapons. Bullets will be your best friend. One gun could last quite a while, but you're gonna need bullets. And don't get me wrong, I don't plan on hiding out forever. However, if you're up higher, not only will you be safe at least for a period, but you'll also be able to pick off zombies from up there without them being able to do anything. They won't run away when they hear a gunshot, they'll just move closer. When the time finally comes and you're either out of food and water or you just know that you need to move down, move on, I'm hoping by this point you'll have at least two or three other people. However, a big, big concern is you do not want to get attached to them. People die incredibly quickly from, you know, it can die incredibly quickly from a zombie bite. You don't want to be attached to them if you have to shoot them in the head. So, when the time comes to go down, or when you're in a rural area, you get together your band, people you trust. You have to be able to trust these people. You don't have to like them. You don't have to always get along with them, but there has to be some cohesiveness within the group. And you go down, and you want to make sure you've all got, you know, fully loaded guns or whatever your weapon is. Personally, I'd like to have a machete and a smaller gun because I can't really carry a heavier gun, but something that can still pack a punch. Next step get in a car and drive. Drive as fast as you can. Get away from that area because by then it's possible that the noise you will have made will have drawn more zombies in and you just want to get away from the horde. Hopefully now there'll be a slow moving bunch and not quicker ones. There are some depictions of zombies show them as being um, slow and kind of, and by kind of I mean really stupid. They, they're just, they can't do anything. Other depictions, however, show them as being nearly intelligent and being able to move very quickly, and that's a dangerous zombie. Where do you drive, though? If you go south, you're going to be hitting a lot more chances of the disease spreading if it, if it doesn't only spread by bite. Um, going north, however, if there's no power, it's more difficult to survive the cold winter if you don't have heat. However, Zombies have a very difficult time living in the cold because their joints freeze. They don't feel it, but it'll take till spring for them to thaw out. After my road trip adventure, I realized that the place I think I would go would be a desert. Now, of course, you'd have to stock up on water often and food, but if you could get onto a, a plateau or a mesa, you could see for miles around on all directions. And from that kind of a vantage point, you can watch out for anything coming for you. Now hopefully, now hopefully the zombie apocalypse doesn't last too long if it does come. But if we were to have a full-scale apocalypse, you need to be prepared and have some kind of plan ready for when this occurs. Just remember that as a human, you've got one big advantage over the zombies. Superior brain power. My name is Keps, and I approve this message. We need that milky hive. There's emptiness inside. I wonder if they even bleed. They're savages, savages. They're the even, even humans. Savages, savages. Killers at the core. They're different from us, which means they can't be trusted. We must sound the drums of war.